there are two types of cognitive tests. The first is a screening test. This would be done if there is a suspicion uh, that there might be a problem, either coming from the patient themselves or from some other source. Uh, it could be a spouse, an adult child, or the clinician who's seeing the patient might suspect something's going on. And so they would do a screening test. The other type of test is a more of a diagnostic test that would be much, much more extensive and detailed. And that would generally only be done if the screening test suggested that there was a problem. The two most common tests are something called the mini mental state exam. And the other one would be the Montreal Cognitive Assessment or sometimes called MOCA. Um, so these, both of these tests are brief about 10 minutes. Um, they range from zero to 30. And there are some cutoff points for both of them that would suggest if you score below that threshold that there may be a problem. It doesn't mean that there is a problem. It just suggests that maybe there's a problem and that further workup is evaluated. The, the cognitive test typically is, we think about it as pencil and paper type of test, right? I mean, sometimes they're available on tablets or on computers, but when we talk about it, we generally just call it a pencil and paper test. So it's something that could be done in a brief, brief fashion. It could be done by any healthcare provider, a primary care physician, a nurse practitioner, a physician assistant. So it could be done by anybody. Um, and that's to give us a sense, what's the likelihood that there is a problem? And should that be followed up with a more comprehensive assessment? The neurologic exam is really, again, generally done by a specialist. Um, and it involves a very detailed physical examination of a person's performance with brain-related tasks. So looking at how the cranial nerves, eyes, ears, uh, tongue, um, sense, taste work, um, your motor exam, um, how much muscle bulk you have. There are many, many things that can cause some cognitive problems. So first though, age itself does not. So age makes us do things a lot slower. So we move slower, we think slower, but we're still moving correctly and we're still thinking correctly. It just takes us longer, that's age. All the other problems are due to many, many different things. So yes, Alzheimer's disease is the most common cause of memory problems, but by far it's not the only cause. Um, so there are other neurologic diseases that can cause memory problems, um, but there are also medical conditions that can cause memory problems, particularly if they're not well cared for.